Well, hello everyone. I hope you had a great Easter Sunday with your family. I just want to introduce you and welcome you to Mr. Bowman's first ever episode of The Bowman Show. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right, Zed, hit the theme music, baby. All right, introducing you now, the most famous five-star general of World War II. He was the supreme allied commander in the European theater, the 34th president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ike President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Woo! Ike, 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 Ike. Yo, Mr. Ike, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. This is the first ever episode. And uh, for you, it must be it must be a big accomplishment being on the first show. Let me tell you. Hey, without well, further ado, here you go, Mr. Ike. Go ahead. I had to dig him up out of Kansas City for you guys, just to, for him to be on the show today. Well, I appreciate you having me, Mr. Bowman. This is a thrill. This is, uh, I heard you're the best in the business, so I'm happy to be here. No, let's not push it here, all right? You have a lot of accolades, but that's not one of them. Kiss him butt here, okay? <laughs> What are you getting into today? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. So, we just finished up talking about Operation Torch. So, interesting enough, that's something that you were involved with. And uh, the invasion of Africa, and how you're cutting off resources going into, uh, you know, the soft underbelly of Europe, fueling the Axis powers. And uh, how you led the charge and in invading in the bottom part of Italy, and... Today, we're actually talking about the Normandy invasion, the D-Day invasion, something that really is stamped on your, you know, your, your title. And that's something that you were really involved with, and you came up with the whole plan, man. And that's what I want to talk about today. But before we get there, I have a quick question. Go for it. Is it true that your father was born in our very own Elizabethville, PA? That's absolutely true. Used to visit him all the time while he was still around. Great town. So, yep, definitely enjoy it out there. Dang, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Is there any, like, thing you have to say about your dad? If In case he's here now. I know he's down under the ground yet, but what do, you, what do you have to say? He was a tough guy. He was a good dad. He pushed me towards football at a young age, which... As you know, I played football at West Point, which got me to my military career. So I played football there for a couple of years and until I broke my leg, unfortunately. You broke but, your uh, leg, Ike? No way. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Are you diving in for diving in for punt block or what? <laughs> it's actually a punt return. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that was, the end of, that was the end of my playing days. But, um, yeah, speaking of football, I heard Upper Dauphin had a really good season last year. So You know what? Good. I like, thanks a lot. Those guys in there will really appreciate that. They like to hear it. They like oh, to hear it. We're here for morale, baby. I like it. Like, 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 All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, your military experience. You mentioned that a little bit. Um, I just want to talk about that just briefly. Uh, from what I read, it I didn't really see anything that you had much experience. In World War One. You, you, you weren't on the battlefield, right? You are just back home training the whole time. I think you're a little pissed off from what I read, but what, what was going on? <laughs> yeah, so um, they kept they kept me back. Uh, I was in training the whole time and, and just kind of studying up on you know, military history and tactics and kind of the evolution of everything. Um, so needless to say, you know, my first leadership experience in a real war was a little nerve-wracking with all that, but um, I felt pre as prepared as I could be. I'll say, I, I couldn't believe that, like with the Axis powers going on at the time, they were taking all over Italy, northern Africa. It just seemed like they were never going to end. You know, our Operation Barbarossa was happening, our ally with the Soviet Union was pretty much about to get taken over, and they plopped that on your lap with little to no experience actually on the battlefield. That had to be frightening had to be i couldn't even imagine a little bit and we kind of we got our feet wet 
in you know North Africa, um, not just us from a combat standpoint, but me as a, you know, from a leadership standpoint. So, um, you know, after that, we got to Sicily and then Italy, um, you know, I kind of built some confidence and, um, Italy kind of grew to a stalemate as we all know. Um, so we knew we needed another invasion to really turn the tide. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I heard that as well. I mean, Reading about the Tehran conference, we just got done talking about that actually, and uh, with our class and how that was important. And Stalin was really pushing down on the Allied powers, right? He was really pushing down on America and Great Britain, saying, "Hey, we need more troops on the ground in the Western Front. Like this isn't doing it. You know, yeah, you guys did a good job getting in Italy, but we need something else, especially towards northern France." And yeah, so talk a little bit about that. What did what, what were you feeling when FDR just came in and said, "Hey"? You're the man. So, uh, you know, we knew there was pressure, obviously, from the Soviet Union. Um, but when um, President Roosevelt appointed me officially to lead this invasion of Europe, um, you know, right off the bat, I knew that we were going to have to assemble the largest force in military history um, to execute it. That was the first thought. Um, we saw what Italy became, uh, and the Germans were battle hardened. So, we knew it was going to be a tough task. I'll say, and I, and I bet you I know what FDR had to say when he thought of you. I like Ike. I like Ike. I like Ike. I like Ike. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're just going to set the stage here for the kids at home listening on their, on their iPads. So June 6th, 1944. This is the day that is forever living in the history books as one of the biggest, the biggest land invasion in world history, okay, uh, there was over 178,000 troops chugging along across the English Channel. Uh, we had over 5,000 naval vessels, including landing pods, battleships, introduced at this battle and this invasion. And how we're using the Air Force to our advantage with the paratroopers diving in behind enemy lines. I couldn't imagine that with the 101st Airborne. You know, knock on the bad band of brothers there. Thank God for them, right? Um, so I, yeah, just describe the battle a little bit. June 6th, 1944. What's going on here with your, your plans? So originally, actually, and I don't know how many people know this, um, this, the invasion was actually scheduled for June the 5th originally, right? Um, however, there was a huge storm, one of the biggest, and it had to have been the last 20 years there, um, pushed, we, so we, we postponed the invasion a day um you know the storm affected our radar um, battleships uh, our planes had trouble finding targets uh you know along the coast uh, our paratroopers weren't going to be able to get there we weren't going to be able to land troops on the beach um so anyway yeah so originally june the 5th got postponed to the 6th um so you know the morning the wee hours in the morning of the 6th the battleships and then you know all these planes um helped us weaken the German defenses ahead of time um, before we landed on the beaches. And actually, the paratroopers, like Band of Brothers, like you mentioned, were a show. Um, they jumped into France uh, in the nighttime morning hours of um, June the 5th into the 6th uh, to secure some targets for the landing forces. Yeah, so like cutting off supplies, military equipment, going to these bunkers that are heavily defending that German Atlantic Wall in northern France, right, in Normandy. Right. Yeah, okay, that's pretty That's pretty interesting. So the five beaches here, uh, what, what do we got here? Let, let me see if I got this right. So we got Utah, Omaha, Sword, Gold, and Juno, right? Absolutely, yeah. We had uh, Omaha and Utah were the American landing beaches, and then you had two British and one Canadian beach. Uh, so as the landing started, um, I was actually a little nervous, and the previous night I had written a, a speech to accept full responsibility in the case that the invasion failed. However, I knew I wouldn't need it. It's worst case scenario. I could fight the Germans on the beach myself. Oh, that's what we need. Oh, my gosh. They might as well yeah. just call you old blood and guts, right? Forget, oh, yes. forget Patton, huh? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, forget Patton. He wasn't even involved. <laughs> oh, Nice. He's in charge of a fake army at the time. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you tell him. You tell him, Mike. You tell him. All right. So, 
Yeah, so with the invasion here, I mean, yes, this is very successful. We all know that this played out in the favors for the Allied powers. And uh, with the Axis powers, this broke the Atlantic Wall. And eventually this would lead to the liberation of Paris and how France will be taken back and how the Allied powers are now moving closer and closer towards Germany. And ultimately, this is going to be the end of the German advancement and offensive. And from here on out, they're going to be restricted, pushed back until, you know, eventually we get to the Battle of the Bulge. But that's for later date. You know, Stalin had to be happy. You know, he had to be extremely happy knowing that we finally got troops, broke Normandy, uh, we broke the Atlantic Wall of the Germans. Um, I just want to know, like, your perspective of it. You, you said about how you were nervous, of, you know, like how you had a letter written. You know, I just couldn't imagine that coming from the leader of this invasion, you know, you're already planning for the worst to happen, right? Yeah, we knew that there were going to be a lot of casualties, um, and that was the hardest part about it personally, right? Sending a lot of young men, a lot of kids off to, to die. Um, we knew that we needed to do this, though. Um, it was necessary, absolutely necessary to um, not just us, but the whole world. Um, you know, it it paid off, but it definitely, it cost a price, right? Um, just that day alone. So Omaha beach, uh, there were, you know, estimates range from two to 4,000 American killed. Um, you know, we were actually considering evacuating the troops off of that beach uh, at one point in the day, but these colors don't run and it took well into the evening to secure the beach, but those men got the job done. Um, you know, Utah Beach was a different story. The casualties were much lower. That was actually where the paratroopers landed, right? They, they landed behind Utah Beach, which prevented the Germans from reinforcing it. Um, so much lower casualties there. But, um, but yeah, overall, uh, costly day, a successful day, and one that eventually led to the liberation of Europe. Oh, my. These colors don't run. I tell you what. If that doesn't get you jumping out of that boat, storming them beaches, and ridding those Germans off of Norman Beach, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. Again. Sweet. All right. Hey, it's been a pleasure, General Eisenhower, Mr. Presidente, number 34. Uh, I just want to finish off here just because we want to try to keep it limited with the time. Um you did it. You did an awesome job. It's been a real pleasure. I appreciate it for the first ever episode of the Bowman Show. And uh, is there anything you can just leave off with to just say something to our upward off and airy Trojans? What, what What do you got, Mister Eisenhower, Mister Mister General Presidente? Well, Mister Bowman, I want to thank you for having me on. First of all, it's been an honor. I'm um, excited to see how this show grows. Um, but to all the students at Upper Dauphin, you know, these are tough and unique times. Uh, it, it requires us as a country to work together towards a common goal for once. Um, it's very similar to the mentality that this country needed and adopted during World War II. Ultimately, we prevailed, so stay tough, lower your shoulder, and we'll get through this together. Wow. Well done. Well done. Hey, Mr. Eisenhower, General, Presidente, I appreciate it. Thanks again. Tell the, tell the missus I said hello, like always, like always. Thanks, Mr. Bowman. All right. Hey, we'll see you later, sir. Take care. I'll throw you back in the grave down there in Kansas, all right? Real That's nice cool. and neat. <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. We just heard from General Eisenhower himself about the D-Day invasion and how this was one of the biggest land invasions ever in, in world history and uh, how this was significant. Again, the finer parts of this, just please understand that this was a total, total victory for the Allied powers. We finally broke the Atlantic Wall that the Germans established on northern France. And for the remainder of the war, Germany is going to be on the defensive being pushed back from either side. On the west, we have the United States, Great Britain, Canadian forces pushing in, and on the eastern side, we still have the Soviet Union. And overall, this creates a two-front war for Germany trying to combat against the Allied powers. And uh, this was a very significant event. Again, June 6th, 1944. Alright guys, hey, stay positive, stay safe. Um, please complete the questions that are attached and have a safe day. Have an awesome day. See you next time.